All right, so in today's video, I'm gonna show you a technique for insulating an exterior wall that's in a basement. And this technique is gonna keep an airspace behind your insulation so everything will stay dry and never get that musty smell. To insulate an exterior wall, basically we need just a couple of things. We need a barrier. Now this is what we're gonna use here. It's just Typar. It's an exterior barrier. It's designed to divert water, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure it off and then stretch it in behind the wall and then staple it tight. So it's right on the back side of the two by four. And that guarantees our airspace between that and the concrete. This way over time, your insulation is guaranteed to never fall against the concrete. So you don't lose your airspace and you're not gonna get moisture building up due to condensation. All right, so really simple. If you're working by yourself, I would recommend oh, calling a neighbor. It's really tricky to work with this stuff. You wanna have somebody holding at the other end. Whoa. And you're just visibly measuring, okay? Right to the corner. All right, that's the actual measurement. And to make life simple, always cut a little bit extra. Now, once you got your amount cut, you wanna just roll it up again real quick. You just let it to the ground, that's actually easier. Because you're feeding in behind all your studs, you wanna get your assistant to just come along and grab that and feed it behind all your studs, unrolling as you go. Now the simpler way to do this, of course, would be to put your paper up before you build your wall. <laughs> Here we're doing things a little bit backwards. Okay, you got it? So in behind all your wiring, now you wanna pull it out through the last piece of the wood and around the front side so that you can actually staple it to the two by four. Very good, now we have our tie par up, which is, of course is just gonna guarantee that if our insulation does fall out of the framework, it's not in direct contact with the concrete. I know it doesn't, it's not much, but it's, it's gonna keep things from going ugly, right? We're not gonna get moisture barrier build up in that wall. Now this vent, you wanna get it in the wall. The way you do that is I'm just cutting the back side of this insulation a little bit so it fits around it, okay? We don't have it strapped into the ceiling yet, which is gonna make this a little bit messy for now, but. Really just wanna get that wrapped in there. Like a glove. Like a glove. When you're insulating a wall, very important, you're cutting around the obstructions. You're not just tucking things out of the way. If I was just to force that in and leave this gap, I've got these cold air holes. So you really wanna just measure things off, right? Mark off where your box are and then cut where the actual box is gonna come through. Okay. This is a compression fit because we're using a 16 inch frame on center. Now if you see any gaps after you're done, take something to fill it back up with. For God's sake, don't leave a gap around your boxes. Now we're using a traditional fiberglass pink product here. This is fine, this is an R12, it's made for two by four walls. In our district, if you have a two by four wall upstairs, you have a two by four wall downstairs. If it's two by six upstairs, you've gotta make a two by six wall in your basement and you have to insulate R20 just like upstairs. It's a lot of framing and insulation for a basement, but the idea is you wanna make sure that every aspect of the house is insulated to the same degree, okay? So, luckily for us, the walls upstairs are two by four. And so we're going to just use the R12. Now you'll see if you have an empty cavity, this is a great place to get some practice. Just press it in, it's a compression fit. Perfect every time. And if it's falling through the back, just push it flush with the front. Okay, that's all you have to do. So here's my trick for cutting in the bottom of the insulation. I actually will put it in and roll it forward. Okay, and then I, I measure it off that way. All right, now if you're not comfortable using this freehand like this, you can pull it out 
with your mark, lay it up against a stud, keep your hands out of the way and cut all the way through on the wood. That works too. Very important though, to insulate all the way to the bottom plate. Um, I know that in the basement down here, it's always 10 degrees year round. And so the question is, what am I insulating against? Because <laughs> it's 10 degrees on both sides of that wall. But since we're creating an airspace, if you do have air as getting in from outside due to rodents and that sort of thing, and you don't insulate all the way to the bottom, all the cold air will run down the wall and right through that part of your floor and you'll create a nasty draft. So if you're gonna have damage from rodents, it's best to leave that all trapped in behind the wall than running across your floor. There are, to the best of my knowledge, at least five different kinds of insulation on the market. And I think what it is, is the marketplace has got a different color for every company. <laughs> I know that um, there's a white, there's a yellow, there's a pink, uh, there's a Roxo, which is like a gray green. This is what we call thermal insulation, okay? All of these products are designed for exterior walls and they keep heat trapped from passing through. The other kind of insulation is sound and fire. Uh, you don't want to mix the two up, okay? They have different properties and they work differently. So where you need thermal insulation, use a thermal insulation. If you're doing an interior wall or a ceiling for sound transmission or for fire resistance, then buy the proper thing for that. In the same regard, this is useless for sound barrier. This isn't stopping nothing. The last thing you need to remember when you're doing your insulation is that the cavity above, the rim joist cavity, that rim plate out there, it extends further than the top of the concrete wall. So your concrete comes up and then there's a plate and then there's a rim joist on the outside of it. So when we're insulating that top space, we're not just putting one piece of insulation in because the truth is with one piece of insulation, it's so far recessed back that the rest of the concrete of the wall is still in part of the building. So you're not insulating anything. So you got two choices. You can either insulate up that rim joist and across the concrete, or you can just cut like I do. I cut three pieces and I put all three pieces in. I know I get R36 in that part, but the reality is I want to bring the insulation in this cavity right up to where this one is, up to the floor. That way I get a nice seal. Bring that insulation right flush with the one in the underneath and cut that, tuck that corner in behind that two by four. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. So there we go. You can see there that that insulation now is right out to the level of our wall and that's insulated. You'll also notice that Connor's not using gloves. Please don't send me a comment saying use gloves. <laughs> this is a new product from Fiberglass Pink and it does not have the itchy fiberglass feeling. So, I mean, we work without uh, respirators with this stuff because it is just that clean. Um, we love it. No more itchy arms. So after we're done insulating everything, we're going to cover it with our Super 6 Poly. Um, had someone recently comment on one of my videos about us crazy Canucks in our plastic, but the reality is we have such varied temperature changes. We need to control the passage of moisture through the wall. So it's very important that in our climate, for sure, and anywhere you're going to get uh, temperatures below minus five, you've got a moisture barrier. If you're not sure if you need one, check your local building code officer. They'll be more than happy to help you out. This is one of these situations. We're just unrolling this. That's about the size of the wall that we're going to cover. And again, make your life simple. Cut it long. And then... It's always the last inch in. <laughs> so here's a trick if you're doing this on your own. Uh, take your garbage box, peel off a piece of the cardboard, and your staple hammer. Now, there's always a joint, it's a seam. What I do is I like to take this and I will put it up over my head. And what we do, check out the bottom. I want to have my plastic about two inches longer than I need it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use the cardboard 
and I'm going to staple right through that cardboard. And it might sound silly. If you only staple the plastic, you go to the other side, you can't pull the plastic tight, you'll pull it off the staples. But this way, I can really yank on this sucker. And that makes it really perfect. So now I just go to the other side. And I make sure I got about the same two inches of plastic down there. And then I can pull it nice and tight. Okay. And now, now that it's hung, now I'm just cutting around this here. And I'm going to slide that over top of it. Okay. Now, our bulkhead is going to come right to here. All right. But what I want to do is I want to cut this plastic so that I can wrap it around the pipe and go right up to the top of the ceiling. So for now, I just want to go to the top of the plate and staple it in. Now I've seen guys, and they'll staple every six inches. It's not necessary, folks. Once the plastic is installed, you don't have to staple it tight. There's no benefit. All right, all you want to do is put a couple in there for good measure, just so that you can see any air gaps. And that's about it. We're not going to hang the drywall and I'm going to compress that drywall to the wood with the screws. So I don't need staples to hold the plastic in place. The young lad Connor there just asked a really good question. He wanted to know about why these boxes didn't have a vapor barrier in behind them. And I think it's because the electrician forgot. So, if you have a box and it doesn't have vapor barrier behind it, then you're only going to be able to do such an efficient job, right? The electricians installed steel boxes on the frame instead of plastic ones, so I can't just install the vapor barrier and tape it to the box. They didn't put a vapor barrier on their box, which is wrong, bad on them. <sighs> and for whatever reason, our electrical code, these guys don't get inspected on every job, just once in a while. The way that we extend this is I'm lifting up my plastic till I hit the joist. Being careful not to cut any of the wires. All right. And I'm laying my plastic. And then, once we get it all up, we'll tape all of our seams together where we had to cut to get around the wires. When taping around an electrical box, it's really not that tricky. You just join the plastic, keep stretching it out, just cut and tear so you never lose that, that front lead edge on the tape. Makes it quite difficult once it's gone to find it again. Anywhere where you've got something coming through the plastic, you have to tape that something to the plastic. All right. Keep it nice and tight so when you put your drywall on, it's not going to cause a bubble. And if you ever, oh, accidentally cut the plastic. This is why we stretch the plastic tight when we're installing it. In case of an accidental cut, just tape it up and walk away. So that's just about it for insulating. Now there is one other thing you could do. Uh, it's not necessary on this project, but a lot of people use the uh, acoustic seal. It's the black tar-like substance that comes out of a caulking gun. Use that bottom, you know, on your bottom and top plates. Um, structural, if you have more than one piece of lumber together, that cuts down on air drafts and that sort of thing. Sure, you can make it 99 to 99.5% quality, that's great, but we don't have that in our code because none of this other house is insulated, so it's not necessary. Um, if you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. I know this kind of information will change from district to district around the world, and so we'll be happy to help discuss and have that conversation. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, by all means, hit the subscribe button. We got a ton of amazing videos and they cover everything from inside and outside, in top of the house to the bottom of the house. If it can be done by yourself, we're gonna cover it. And if you like this information and you wanna see more of these videos, press the blue button. Thanks a lot for watching.